Have you ever had a time where you were really anxious or frustrated, but when you tried to share your experience with someone else, it just made things worse? You tell your friend, I'm worried about this upcoming exam, and they tell you, don't be, you'll do great, I'm sure of it. Still worried, you continue to explain, the professor just never makes their exam like the homework questions, it's so frustrating. Now they respond, well, have you tried studying the textbook? At this point, you're realizing the conversation isn't making you feel any less worried or frustrated. So you quickly end it by saying, I guess I could read the textbook more. Why do these instances often leave us feeling worse? After all, our friend was just trying to help. The truth is, the responses didn't help because at the moment, we weren't looking for reassurance or advice. So what were we looking for? Being listened to and heard is one of the greatest desires of the human heart, and those who learn to listen are the most loved and respected. Most of us would read this quote and agree, no surprise here, we all enjoy a good listener. But if you look at the words more closely, we can notice that there is an important distinction being made. Being listened to and heard is one of the greatest desires of the human heart. This separation suggests there's a difference between the two and that we as humans crave both. In our previous example, our friend was clearly listening to us, but they weren't fully hearing us. They never took a moment to really connect, to understand where we were coming from, and to validate how we were feeling. This emotional connection is what we really wanted from them. So that begs the question, how do you show someone that you really hear them? The truly good listeners of the world do more than just listen. They listen, seek to understand, and then validate. That third point, validation, is the magic ingredient to developing healthy and satisfying relationships. Validation is to show interest in and affirm the worth of another person's comments, requests, or emotions. Effective validation has two components. One, it identifies a specific emotion, and two, it offers justification for feeling that emotion. Here's some example responses. Wow, that would be confusing. He really said that? I'd be angry too. You have every right to be proud. That was a major accomplishment. I don't blame you. This is a hard class. Notice how in each response, you show the other person that you both recognize the emotion they're feeling and offer some justification for the acceptance of it. Put simply, you understand where they're coming from. In this way, validation becomes a versatile tool. It calms others down and resolves conflict. It adds a boost to another's excitement and joy. It more easily shows love and compassion, and it helps others feel safe and comfortable confiding in you. So what makes it the best initial response? The most common mistake that people make is not recognizing when someone is looking for validation. And for good reason. Most people don't come out directly asking for it. We mistakenly offer them reassurance or advice because that's what we thought they might be looking for, but it rarely will help them. Think about this. Let's say you're talking to a friend who's been feeling insecure about their looks. After a long day, they sigh and say, I'm never going to get a guy to date me. Most people's first reaction would be to immediately shoot down this comment, insist it's not true, and proceed to try to build their friend back up with praise and encouragement. But let's be real for a second. If you immediately respond with that's not true, will it really make her feel any better? Will she have a stroke of insight and say, oh yeah, I guess you're right, thanks, and then go on happily with her day? Not likely. A better approach would start with some curiosity and listening. What? Why do you say that? She says, I just see all these beautiful women everywhere and I'm nowhere near as pretty. And then you validate. There's a lot of beautiful women here. It's hard to not compare yourself to others. She says, yeah, it sucks. You ask another question. Why do you feel like you're not as beautiful? If you continue the conversation in this ask, listen, and validate fashion, you're much more likely to help your friend work through their emotions, uncover the root causes, and actually make them feel a little better. The problem with offering immediate reassurance is that it's just another form of judgment. When we tell people they should or shouldn't feel something, we risk making the situation worse. It's very difficult for someone to work through issues when they're blinded by strong emotions. 
These difficult emotions get stronger and more intimidating when fought or suppressed. So when you validate other people, you're actually helping them see and accept their emotions for what they are, just feelings, neither good or bad, making it significantly easier for them to process them and break free. We often make a similar mistake by offering others unsolicited advice. One of the worst feelings in the world is to open up to someone and immediately get hit in the face with suggestions and solutions, when all you were really looking for was a little validation. Understand that most people know how to solve their problems before they complain to you. They're just looking for someone else to see and appreciate their struggle. So before you try to offer solutions, ask them outright. Are you looking for advice or just someone to hear you out? Even if they are open to your suggestions, you'll still need to listen to them first. After all, a doctor doesn't prescribe medicine before diagnosing the issue. After they feel understood, they'll be much more receptive to the feedback that you end up giving them. More often than not, people start conversations just to feel some genuine connection for however momentarily. Through curiosity, empathetic listening, and validation, we usually can provide someone exactly what they were looking for, developing extraordinary relationships in every step of the way. Sorensen has developed a four-step approach to giving validation and feedback in nearly any situation. In practice, you can go through these steps in less than a minute for most interactions. If you're interested in an in-depth video on these steps, please let me know in the comment section below and consider subscribing.